Okay, so on to the next track in Vicky's Harmony Highway, man. Uh, it's a Vicky Smith series. It's been a fantastic series so far. We've reacted to three songs, lots more coming. Uh, if you're only hopping on now, I suggest you go back three and watch from the very beginning and just, uh, just follow the progression of the series. It's actually beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful music. Very calming. I'm finding myself very calm and tranquil. Um, and music that's actually substantive, which I'm really, really enjoying today. Um, but yeah, let's get on to the very next one. I've never heard of this artist, oh, Bears Den. First time, first time hearing them. Um, when you break, don't know the artist, don't know the song. Let's uh, rock and roll, man. Let's see what we've got over here. Let's go. A lyric video. Oh, I'm loving this, these pieces with guitar, man. Spoiled, selfish little child Went out to play out in the wild Found you shaking like a leaf Underneath your family tree Wow You could never live out in the open Regretting every word you spoke When you break it's too late for you to fall and the blame that you claim is all your own fault and You've been crying now for forever But forever's come and gone You keep begging for forgiveness But you don't think you've done wrong You've been crying now for forever Forever's Okay, this song is absolutely beautiful. I am loving this playlist. I am loving this playlist. There's nothing that I haven't liked so far. It's all been absolutely beautiful music. And it happens to have a lot of guitar. So uh, for me, that plays straight into my wheelhouse. I absolutely adore it. I'm not sure if you did that by design with regards to the selection or you just love... Um, um, pieces with guitar as much as I do. Um, this song over here for me, it just speaks of just going through the the flows of life and going out into the wild with all of these dreams and with the innocence and things like that. And then things happen, traumas happen. Um, and then you start becoming afraid. And because you became a frame and because you suffered that trauma, you start becoming guarded. When you start becoming guarded, it flicks you into a different uh, um, psychological state where you either become destructive, where people who never cut you, you're the one, like the people who've never cut you, but you deciding to bleed on them, right? Which then um, culminates in a whole series of consequences for you where you don't understand why your life is like that. And a lot of the answers to our present and a lot of the answers to our future actually lies in our past. It lies in our traumas. It lies in in our pain. It lies in our agony. It lies in everything that we went through, whether it be abuse, drug, uh, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, family abuse. It doesn't matter. Those leave marks. Those leave wounds that don't really heal. Um, but there are ways to dealing with those kind of things and dealing with those things. The only way to deal with it is actually to open up to them and to realize that those things have happened. Those things need to be left in the past and being used as lessons for your future as opposed to for you sitting there and just dwelling on them. Um, and that is a process of you, you know, incrementally trying to let that out, right? Either through therapy or through the work you do or through in like introspecting heavily and um, kind of becoming awakened to... Um, 
um, uh, um, those kind of things. And what actually ends up happening is everything lands up being your fault because the moment you don't take accountability for any of your of your rea- of your actions, right? You tend to always repeat them. And even if you weren't someone who um, did those kind of things to somebody, you land up being the person that does do those kind of things to somebody because that's all you know and because you've never been able to work with it. So, for example, if you came from an abusive family, right, you don't deal with that kind of trauma, you don't deal with that kind of pain, you bury it, right? All you're actually doing is you're just bottlenecking it over here. And then when you go into your own family, you're going to deal with it the way that you know how in the environment that you that you were brought up in, essentially. It's not true for all, but it is it is statistically proven for quite a lot of uh, uh, um, families and uh, that happen that way, right? And, and not taking accountability for your life and not actually putting the blame squarely on your own shoulders every time you make a mistake, every time you decide to be delusional about it and you decide to um, play this denialism game with yourself where you're like, it's not me, it's this, the whole world is at fault but yourself, you're never going to get out of that world, you're never going to get out of that pain, you're never going to break free from that because everything, everything is your fault, everything lies with you. You can control those things. If you are in effect of other people, that is your fault, right? Um, and uh, yeah, so I think that's what, what it speaks to is that as a child, you don't really understand that. You don't understand the uh, consequence um, sort of scenario. You don't understand that, oh, if I do this, this happens. If I do that, that happens, right? You don't understand that. You're free. You, you, you're you this wild um um, beautiful spirit that goes out there and then you realize that the world isn't as easy as you thought it was right and then um, the world tries to drag you into many different um, um, spheres of darkness and uh, addiction and things like that and they try to give you these cheap happinesses and if you chase that you can you know you've got free will but then there are consequences for that. And then you land up shaking underneath your family tree. Now, the shaking underneath that family tree, I'm not entirely sure if he's um, speaking to um, the child coming from an abusive uh, family itself, right? Or uh, shaking under that family tree, meaning that um, he, he lands up um, sort of seeking help from, from, his, from his elders uh, to try and get him out of situations. I'm, I'm not entirely sure about uh, that over there, I'm, I'm just sort of speculating. But anyway, let's carry on. It's a beautiful song. Bleeding hands of shaking. As your love starts to surround. See, that begging for forgiveness, but don't think that you've done wrong, right? So that's where the denial comes from. So it's like, oh, please forgive me, but I didn't really do anything wrong. It's actually not my fault. Do you know what I mean? But I'm just, this is what I'm meant to do, right? So let me just say sorry. You know, it's kind of like that that, that uh, sort of like game that even children play essentially where it's like a child will do something and then say sorry and then it'll do the same some the same thing and then say sorry and then do the same thing and then say sorry and it's like you've got to teach them to to like be okay now he's learned the concept of sorry which is a good thing i've done something wrong um i say sorry for doing that something wrong that's fantastic but then they don't kind of get the concept that they can't keep doing that something wrong because that sorry means nothing right it doesn't mean anybody it doesn't mean anything for uh, the person you're saying sorry to, and eventually it won't mean anything to you because that sorry, you know, doesn't 
you saying sorry should, should, should mean that you feel ashamed for what you've done, right? That should affect you, right? If you can easily just throw that word out, then that word doesn't really mean anything to you, right? That you don't feel any shame. And if you as a human being don't feel any shame, it's a very dangerous place to be in because you, you're going to spiral out 100%, right? Our shame kind of keeps us in check. The reason why we stop doing things that make us feel shameful is because it makes us feel shameful. It makes us feel guilty for what we've done. If we remove that standard, then we just become um, human beings with no heart, Right. So I think that's what that line actually plays into. You've been crying out forever. So, yes, you you are suffering. You are feeling the pain. You are feeling the wrath of the, the of life, essentially. Um, and you and it feels like you've been crying out forever. But the reason you've been crying out forever is because you're not willing to take responsibility for the things that you have done. Right. In order to heal, you need to face really harsh realities. And you need to sort of repent on those on those mistakes that you've made in a real genuine way. Uh, and that's why it feels like you're never healing because you're always in denial. That's why where I think he's going with this. But anyway. But you don't think you've done wrong. You've been crying now for forever. Forever's come and gone. My pleading hands are shaking I like the instrumentation of so much, man. So tell me another beautiful life. Tell me everything I want to hear. Don't you lay here by my side? I don't want to fuck away all my fear. Tell me another beautiful life. Tell me everything I want to hear. Don't you lay here by my side? This is over here is where he's basically trying to say that he's actually not taking accountability for anything. He wants, he would rather you lie to him than tell him the the, the, the honest truth, right? Because the truth is too painful to take. So it's like, yeah, you can be with me, stay here, tell me what I want to hear, don't tell me the truth, right? I want to be distracted by cheap, by cheap thrills. You know what I mean? I want to fuck away all my fears. And he never can, right? He never can. So he can have that momentary distraction, but and he can he can get told people can beat around the bush and sugarcoat everything and all that kind of thing. That's what he wants, but it's not what he really wants. Like deep down, something in innately inside him is screaming out that where he knows like he needs to deal with the truth and he kind of knows what the truth is, but he doesn't want to face it, right? And somebody actually saying it to him, saying the real reality is going to just absolutely shatter him, right? So he doesn't want to deal with that. That's just too too painful. That's too fearful. Those are his fears, right? Those are the demons in the closet of like, those truths are the things he never wants to release. You know what I mean? Because those are hard to handle because when you face yourself, your true self, when you face yourself, when you know what you are looking at six inches away from the mirror, that will shake That'll shake anyone down to the fucking core, right? When you actually know the true reality of who you're looking at in the mirror and who that person really is and what that person really does, that is painful to take.
hold each other. Is that it? Jeez, that was an abrupt ending to that song. Nor hands will never be clean. At least we can hold each other. So over there, again, uh, that was quite an abrupt end to that song, but the way he ended it over there is it's like, you have your demons, I have my demons, you know who I really am, I know who you really are, um, let us just keep lying to each other, right? Um, and we just continue the cycle, at least we can hold each other, at least we two peas in a pod. Will that end to something great? No, obviously not, right? Um, that's very destructive, but it's almost like I can't get myself out of the cycle. And um, I don't know, the song is called When You Break, so maybe it is a, a, a point of awareness where it's like, you know, you, it builds up to this point where eventually you do break open, right? I don't say break down. Break down is quite a negative thing. People don't break down. They break open. Just think about every time somebody's just going through something and then eventually it all just bleh, it comes out, right? You don't break down. You don't break down completely and you stop functioning, right? It's actually when you break open is when you start to function again. It's when you start to see things clearly again because all of this muck that was sitting in here all came out. Right, you break open, and once you break open, you see yourself, you see your real heart again, and all of a sudden you light again. Um, so yeah, I prefer to say that. But beautiful song, man, absolutely beautiful. Loved, 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 loved the guitar, this, loved the instrumentation, loved everything. So far, four tracks, all four haven't heard, and all four will be put on my playlist. Love that. Very down my alley, specifically for my mood today. You guys, let me know what you think down below and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.